Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name is Alcoholic, and I'm a friend. <laughs> I'm glad you all are here. I know society is glad that all of us are here. Because <laughs> I'm guilty of 90% of the things that I did. <laughs> and if, you, if you're guilty, you're in the right place to admit it. Nobody else may not be excited about it as we are, but... <laughs> I love this man. A lot of, lot of, uh, lot of young people. Huh? <coughs> you know, we got, we got some young people at my group. Oh, by the way, my group is the uh, Clarkson Twelve Step Group over in Tucker. <coughs> We've been around for 38 years, and I've been, been a member out there for 21 years. And uh, they tried to run me off when I first got there. <laughs> <laughs> Because, of course, I know everything when I got there. And they tried to run me off because I'd never been in, in an AA meeting before. It was my very first time. By the grace of God, I only picked up on a white chip. And I say that for people that's struggling with one white chip. Listening to people that have picked up a bunch of white chips. It used to make me feel guilty, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, I had to go get one more. <laughs> I got it this time. Thank, thank God. And, you know, you'd be sitting back there saying, maybe, you know, you, I'm hurting and I'm struggling. And I'm like, man, well, do I need to go get another white chip? <laughs> so if you only picked up one white chip, then that's cool. That's cool. And uh, coming back, uh, you will be contacted. And again, I, uh, I was, uh, that's been my home group for 20, 20, 20, 21 years, and, and I used to take over the, uh, Saturday meeting. Saturday meeting was a speaker's meeting, and, uh, the last Saturday of the month was a anniversary, uh, anniversary. And, and I couldn't, I couldn't communicate with people because I didn't think that I was, I was afraid that you all would find out who I was, and so I was cool. <laughs> How you doing, Frank? What's up? <laughs> What's your name? You know my name. <laughs> you know, because I was afraid to, uh, you all to find out that I wasn't who I was pretending to be. And so I was real quiet. And, and uh, what I did, I, I, no matter who was chairing the meeting for that quarter, I would always fix coffee because we had a little... A little bar type thing, and and so what I would do, I'd go behind the bar, and if you came up, I'd make you coffee and sit it on there. And I did that for about five years <laughs> in recovery. That was my job for five years. That's the way that I communicated with you all. And, and the people at the group, you know, they knew I was a troublemaker, so they just left me alone. <laughs> if you want to fix coffee, just let him fix coffee. <laughs> uh, I was I was in the meeting and, and Jim was sitting back there. Jim was here when I got here, and uh, he reminded me that Frank, I'm here, so you got to tell the truth. <laughs> and that's Jim. Jim, what you got in there? About fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was he was here when I got here and he still speaks to me, so that says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um, when I when I started going to Clarkson I was I was I was sort of intimidated. You know, the first night I got there I, I was sort of intimidated because I came from Decatur to to uh I guess that's Stone Mountain, maybe Tucker. I came from Decatur to over there, and, and when I got there that Saturday night, it was a big birthday bashing, and it was like a little warehouse sitting sit back off the road, and, and so when they, 
the people that were riding, riding me around thought that I knew where I was going. I had just got kicked out of a treatment center. And that's kind of strange. Isn't it? How do you get kicked out of a treatment center? <laughs> Trying to run the place. <laughs> but anyway, I just got kicked out of the treatment center, and and uh, and uh, I'm riding with these people, and, and we're riding and sharing. And, and so they said, well, it's getting late. They said, well, Frank, why do you stay? I said, I live in Decatur. They said, we thought you stayed in Stone Mountain. And uh, we're not going back to Decatur, Frank. And I had been around for a while, and I said, listen, just get me to a meeting, and I'll be okay. See, just get me to, they said, well, we know where I'm meeting at. And so they took me to Clarkston, and they pulled up on Lewis Road. It was a little warehouse type thing. And they pulled up on Lewis, pulled back in the little warehouse, and I was kind of leery. I mean, we didn't saw him <laughs> Brother in Stone Mountain, <laughs> so I, I, I said okay, and I get out the car and I walk in the place. And when I walk in the place, it's poor, about like this place. But you all probably got one row more than we had. And uh, I walked in the place, and man, I really got scared. Then I was like, oh my god, this is not an ad meeting. I thought it was a cool little clean bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I started backing up to the door. <laughs> and a fella named Wayne come get me and he said, hey, 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 hey. Uh, what's your name? I said, well, Frank, Frank, Frank. He said, well, come here, let me show you something. So he take me up to the grapevine and buy me a grapevine. And, and he talks to me and walks me around and introduced me to people. Well, what, what, what great work are we doing after all this anonymous? I, I've heard this lady say, I sit to a guy and he made me feel so comfortable. You know, and he walked me around and, and I, the more he walked me, the more I, I became okay. And so I sit down and at the end of the meeting he found me and he said, do you need a, I don't know how he knew I wasn't driving. <laughs> Pretty sophisticated, huh? <laughs> and he said, "You need a ride to the to the, to the train station." And uh, I wanted to say no, but it was a long walk. And I said, "Yes, I need." <laughs> so he take me up to, the, and when he's taking me to the train station, he's telling me about the kind of work he do, and he's telling me how much money he makes an hour. And I said, "God, man, you think you can give me one of those jobs?" <laughs> He said, no, son, you need to get sober first. <laughs> you just focus on getting sober. And that's what I did. I, I focused on getting sober. And uh, and uh, Jim and I was talking about uh, one of our group members. I, I remember um, because you could I, I, you'd get off the road up on um, Hugh Howell and walk down to uh, to the group. And as you're walking down, there's only one road to go down, go down to the group. And there's people that are coming to the meeting will pass you by. Group members will pass you by. And of course, I'm getting resentments as I'm walking. <laughs> and so you get to the meeting and they're so happy to see you. <laughs> Hi, Frank, how are you doing? And I'm like, man, you don't, I'm thinking to myself, you don't like me, man. I was walking down the street and you didn't even stop picking me up. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I decided that I was going to uh, uh, walk behind the building for a little way. You could walk behind the building because I didn't want to get a resentment. I didn't want to leave the meeting. And I didn't want anybody to get one. So I decided I was going to walk behind the building. And so what happened was, was that after I came from behind the building, this guy comes down the street in a, in a Mercedes. Beautiful Mercedes with a convertible top. And he had a beautiful woman in the car with him. I mean, everything is just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you want to ride? And, 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 I, and I thought probably somebody was with me. <laughs> and he said, yeah, you and I said, yeah. So he said, get in. I got in the car. And I'm sitting in the back seat. And, and the latest hair is the same color as a coat, sort of like a uh, 
brownish red or something in a coat. Looks like a hair. You know? Beautiful coat. Beautiful hair. Beautiful car. And so we get to the meeting and I'm I'm sitting and I'm mad and I'm angry. I'm like, Who do they think they are? <laughs> I mean, I'm really pissed. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to the meeting, and he, and he lets me out the car, and, said, and I don't even say thank you. He said, Frankie, okay, yeah. And I walk on in the building, and, I, and I'm sitting in the building, and um, and this, and the, as the meeting is going on, back those days we had smokers meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't get that privilege. <laughs> but we had smokers meetings, so the, the smokers would sit over there, and the non-smokers would sit back there. We was in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy was a non-smoker, and I hated him for that, too. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so he would, uh, he was sitting over and I was stealing. <laughs> And he raises his hand and he shares. He says, uh, last night, uh, when my wife went to the shower, I got in the car, went down on the boulevard. Some of us know where the boulevard is. Over on Ponce de Leon. <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> and he said, I go, I go over on the boulevard, and when I'm on the boulevard, I smoke up the car and call my wife and uh, because the guys won't give it back to me and I don't have enough money so I call my wife she got to get in the other car and come down and we find this guy and get my car, get, get the car out of the car and as he was sharing his tears was running down down his face I mean it, he was hurt you know, and, and so as he was sharing and all of that hate that I had all of that jealousy and all that envy that I had went away and I had this new emotional this new spiritual awakening and that was, was that no matter what I don't have I have lost the desire to do that <laughs> and all of a sudden the tide had changed the riches that I had was far greater than the riches that he had. And that was one of the greatest spiritual awakenings that I... To lose the desire to drink. <laughs> if you're sitting here today and you ain't trying to figure out how to get that next drink, what a success. Because my disease is centered in my thinking. You know, in my thinking is well, and I, and my my ideal of the first step is is that it, it tells me that that uh, that uh, that I would think my way into the liquor store because I never I never been walking the street and the liquor store just shows up. <laughs> don't jump off the shelf. <laughs> so at some point, I had a great idea. <laughs> you know how you play around with those thoughts? And you try to you try to fix this stuff. You're putting stuff in places and you're shifting around and you're just playing with it and playing with it and playing. And then you get a great idea. <laughs> that guy that gave me that product to sell for him <laughs> because I had moved in his house and wasn't working anywhere and had been there for six months and he couldn't figure out how to get me to leave <laughs> and he had a great idea. <laughs> I'll put him to work and I went up where he told me to go to work at and I had a great idea. I said, well, I'll take this and do this with this. And when I finish with that, then I'll pay him his money back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so the first step, the first step for me is so, is so powerful because 
What happens to me is, this is my story, not you all. What happened to me is that uh, if I don't bring my thoughts here and let you all help me manage my thoughts, then I'll act out on my thoughts. The first step said we became powerless over alcohol and our lives had become unmanageable. So the first step teaches me that I got to come here so that you all could help me manage my thoughts. And the way you help me manage my thoughts is, is that I got to tell somebody about some of the stuff that's going on in my head. You know, I, I know, I know about 20% of you all hear me and the rest of you all listening to what's going on in your head. <laughs> <laughs> So give it somebody after the meeting and say, what were they laughing at? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So it's centered in my thinking. And I have to trust my thinking to my group and to my sponsor. And a lot of times I don't want to... <laughs> I got married in the program. Of recovery, my wife 13 stepped me. <laughs> I had 15 years and she had one day. <laughs> now you see what I'm saying? I was taking advantage of. <laughs> you know, I had I had seen my wife struggle for a lot of times around the room. And, uh, and uh, this one time she called me, and uh, and uh, we went on a date, and I've been with her ever since. Uh, she went out and drank on me three times. <clears throat> and boy, you talk about pain, because she has a beautiful personality. She's smart. She's funny. Just, oh, God. <laughs> You think I'm funny? She is, man. And she's smart with funny. See, she's. I'm, I'm not. I, I gotta think of stuff. Her, her just. <laughs> and that's what I love about it. See, I, I can. When I'm bored, she entertains me. <laughs> she's funny. And 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 so what happened was, what happened was was that uh, um, we got together. She got drunk a couple of times on me. When she got drunk, it, it hurt. You know, and I'm not pushing uh, um, you come a romance. I'm just telling you what happened to me. Got a problem with it? Call your sponsor. <laughs> 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 but but she she um and and when she got drunk, that light that she had in her eyes went out. I watched that light go out. And man, that was that was one of the biggest hurt that I'd ever had. But what happened was was that I had. I had a sponsor that got me into our sister program uh, after I had about five years of recovery because I kept getting into these relationships. And, and every week I'd come to him complaining about some relationship that I'd gotten in. And so he saw that something was unnatural with the way that I was processing the steps. And he said, why don't you come try this? And he took me over to, to Al-Anon and I saw it. And I've been a member of Al-Anon now. I'm not pushing out. I'm not signing anything. I'm just telling you my story. I've been a member of Al-Anon now for about 15 years. And that's the thing that saved my marriage. Uh, uh, I was able to, I was able to stay out of my wife's business. I, I learned that I did not have, have to fix her. They got a thing that they call the three C's. You didn't cause it. You can't cure it. And you can't control it. And I live by that. And so my wife is uh, coming up on uh, five years of recovery now. Her daughter is coming up on three years of recovery because she benefited from it also. And her best friend is coming up on how many? Six. Two years. <laughs> Two years of recovery. And, and so, and so, and so, um, you say God's will. I said, I don't know. But what what I do know is that a lot of people benefited from, 
from uh, from what happened. And so I I I uh, I'm a I'm a house painter. I paint houses because I don't play well with others. I I don't work <laughs> I don't work good for eight hours for nobody. I <laughs> I don't do authority well. I, <laughs> I ain't confused about that. <laughs> we found that in my fourth and fifth step. <laughs> I tried to sell cars when I first got sober. And uh, boy, what a what a task. <laughs> Everybody lies. Customer lies, the salesman lies. And I lied. <laughs> you know, and I was working a pretty good spiritual program there for a minute. How much time I got? I don't see no clocks. What? 30, 30, 30 minutes. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, good, 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 because I got this. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 I started selling cars and... and, and and, I, and, and, you know, I thought I was a spiritual guru until I went out and started selling cars. You know what happened? <laughs> what happened? What happens is over here, I get to live the life that we talk about. You know what I'm saying? I get to live the life that we talk about. You know, a, a lot of words are thrown around, but I didn't have a meaning for words. I, I didn't have an experience for what the word. And so, and so, uh, we, I was talking a good program. As long as I was in the room with you all. Hallelujah, God is good. I love all of you all. And everything is wonderful because we all work in the same program. So I wasn't having any conflicts. <laughs> you all sort of like me every once in a while. But what happened was, was when I went out in the world and started working out there, and I'd start talking that holy stuff. Hallelujah. And well, Frank, I really don't want to hear that. <laughs> I'm like, God, man, I, this is what I do. And, the, and those guys was uh, retired doctors, retired professors. And, and I said, well, uh, they said, well, what do you do, Frank? I said, well, I'm a, I'm a recovering alcoholic. They said, excuse me? <laughs> you know, because you all had made me feel that it was great to be a recovering alcoholic. So for me, that was a good title. <laughs> and I told those people that, and they thought that it was one of the stupidest things they ever heard. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, I have to, I have to, I have to regroup because they see me, they see me for who I am. You know, they see. I remember one day I was standing up talking to a guy. We was getting ups. You know, you get ups on the car lot. And so we stand. <laughs> We standing up there getting ups, and uh, and so this guy comes over me and start brings me the Bible and start reading the script to me, and and he asked me a question and I was sharing sharing with him, and all of a sudden, I see him going out on the lot with my customer, <laughs> and and I get upset, and so now this is where I have to work. This is where the, the uh, six and seven step made sense to me at. Because all of a sudden my character defects, uh, uh, what this fifth step teaches taught me was that I will not, I will, the exact nature of the wrong is, is fear. <laughs> the exact nature of the wrong is fear. They, they didn't care who I did or how I did it. It was fear. And so all of a sudden a part of my life was threatened and when it was threatened, my social skills just went right out the window. <laughs> I was not saying sir, thank you, and I was using all those other words. L and MF and, <laughs> and they was like, man, I thought you were spiritual, right? <laughs> and so that's what that's what that's that's what happened. I did not I did not Started working the program until I started doing life, and what I found in my life, what I found was that I don't, I don't work well with others, and so I, I paint houses for a living, and I work uh, on my own boss. I go to work when I get ready to go to work, and I ain't trying to be rich. I'm satisfied with the money that I make, and I live a pretty good life today. I live a pretty good life today. I, I, uh, I, uh, 
I do a lot of service work. I got about uh, I got about uh, eight or nine sponsees, and all of them got uh, years in recovery. Newcomers won't won't approach me a lot of time because I believe in putting pen to the paper. They want to come talk about it <laughs> and explain it to me. <laughs> and they'll call me late at night and talk for two hours explaining it to me. And so I give them assignments. Put the pen to the paper and so the average newcomer won't approach me. But this 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 is a wonderful life. Uh, that I live. That was the thing that I that I picked up out of one of the pamphlets, and I couldn't find my glasses. But they got a pamphlet that says uh, that talks about how the thing say um, it's a test where you sure you're an alcoholic or not. You know, and they got the little question thing. Do you drink in the morning? Uh, uh, have you ever been locked up for? Drinking on the job, and I sort of like reverse it. Have you ever been locked up for thinking on the job? Have you ever have you ever gone to jail for thinking too much? Uh, and and it goes on to say, uh, 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 well, it reverses the drinking from the thinking. Again, I have a little notes, but I left my damn glasses in the car, and the homeboy told me that I shouldn't worry about notes, but that's what I work by notes, huh? <laughs> Anybody got some old folk glasses? There you go. <laughs> that's smooth. <laughs> that's how this deal works, man. You just get close to needing something, man. <laughs> Say stuff like, "Have you ever stayed off work for thinking too much?" And, and it goes on and on. But it's 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 one of those deals that I've lost the flavor for. And and uh, and there's another thing that my wife my wife is a kindergarten teacher, and I like this little deal here. And it's sort of like uh, how how it's, it compares. I like the way. It reminded me of us in here, but it's for the kindergartners, right? It's for the toddlers. <laughs> and it reminds me of some of my sponsees. <laughs> and it says, it's called Toddler's Rule. It says, if I like it, it's mine. <laughs> Alcoholics may not, this may not apply to you all. <laughs> <laughs> if I could take it from you, it's mine. <laughs> if I had it a little while ago, it's mine. <laughs> well, I learned so much from my wife kindergarten class. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's if if it's mine. It must never appears to be yours in any way. <laughs> if I'm doing a building something, all the pieces are mine. <laughs> if it looks just like mine, it's mine. <laughs> If I saw it first, <laughs> if you're playing with something and put it down, it's automatically automatically become mine. Okay. If it breaks, it's yours. <laughs> goes on to say, if it breaks, but if you ha if you're having fun with the pieces, <laughs> then they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any doubt, it's mine. <laughs> you know, and I and I and I and I, and I love that uh, uh, about uh, 
about Alcoholics Anonymous and, and alcoholics. One of, the, one of the things that helped me when I got here was my loneliness went away because I found a group of people that thought just like I thought. You know, and that's why I was so lonely. Everywhere I went, you know, I would have these thoughts and these ideas and I couldn't share them with anybody. And then I got the Alcoholics Anonymous and you all started speaking my language. <laughs> You know, and I've and I've been I've been a part of this organization ever since. I've gone to to uh, to groups. I I used to go out to one that room out there, and they asked me to become a member out there. And I told them that my 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 group was the best group in the world. And and so and that's what I see when I when I look out here, man. You all, uh, this is a this is a wonderful thing, especially with the with the young people, because we we get so caught up in traditions and rules and and I think at some point in my group we put too much religion on AA you know and and, and this is not for me this is these are my opinion this is not a a, a, a a religious deal this is this is and I love this fifth, fifth tradition thing what a what a great bridge uh, we had a, we had but we had one problem with a guy in, in early recovery, he was coming to meetings, fighting and, and putting his hands on people, you know. And we 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 work real hard at at uh, at being okay with it because nobody wants to see a drunk leave. And so we work real hard at at, at being okay with it. And and I remember when we got to the to the uh, when we couldn't do it anymore, we. Uh, had some elder state people to go over to uh, the Triangle and talk to, I think, Dow. Old guy Dow was over there then. I used to go over there and see Dow, and I used to love, I love elder state people, man. They just, whew. I mean, they, they're the corner, cornerstones of a lot of these, a lot of these meetings. And so Dow was sitting over, and we went, one of our old timers went over and talked to Dow, and Dow told us to read and study the fifth tradition. And, and and we came back over and we had a, a big meeting on that on that thing and we brought our, everybody in and we told them what Dow said that we could ask them to leave the group but we couldn't ask them to leave Alcoholics Anonymous <laughs> because it says each group and and so we 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 asked the guy we voted and and I think we had an uh, overwhelming. And of course, that was the people that, that just didn't want him to, to go. And eventually, we voted him out and he, he left. And, and as we went around, we saw him at other groups. Uh, but, but, but we, uh, all, 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 of, all of the other rules, the, um, is one of the things that I struggle with over my, over my group because I, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what, who I was when I first got here. I didn't know how to share. Hey, hey. I mean, they didn't have a class, <laughs> an AA classroom, and said, this is how you do it. And so they told me to be honest, and I came in, and I, and I got honest. If I heard, I told people that I was hurting, you know, and I told them how I was hurting. Because I went to some meetings in Atlanta, and those boys over there would do fifth steps in the meetings. They didn't, it, was, it wasn't about we share in a general way. <laughs> <laughs> they did fifth steps. And so I came over here with that. And man, I, you know, and, 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 and my truth was so, was, and people would get up and walk out the room when I would start sharing. Uh, uh, because I didn't know how to share. And what is that? And anyway. I didn't know how to share, and, and, and so they would get up the room and start walking out. And, and the only thing that kept me coming back was I wanted to stay sober more than I worried about what you all thought about me. <clears throat> I wanted to stay sober more than I, what, what, because my head would tell me that, that you don't like me and you wish that I wouldn't come there, but I just kept coming back. You know, I, I, I would come back some days just to make you mad. And I, <laughs> and I would find the people that, 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 would, that would look at me the hardest and I'd sit right in front of them. <laughs> I got sober in spite of them. You know, and so, and so the newcomer is sort of like, 
I love the newcomer because the newcomer is is uh, is what keeps me is what keeps me sober because I remember I don't never want to be I don't never want to be nothing but green. I don't never want to be so sober that uh that uh I can't I can't sit down and um uh, and uh that I'm not approachable. And and that's what uh that's what I love about the new that's what Bill and Bill and, uh, Bill and the doctor finally realized they you know, it wasn't gonna work. Uh, 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 they they realized that they couldn't do it together without the newcomer. And so and so uh, we 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 are uh, we are moving into we are moving into uh, into this uh, this new recovery. I had a kid tell me in a meeting the other day. He said, "Mr. Frank, I could download a car off the internet and put it together in ten days." <laughs> He said, "That's that's the kind of information we get now." You know, he said, "We we get we go on a computer, and I'm not that computer savvy, and it was it sounds profound to me." You know, but what he didn't realize was that recovery is a process. Recovery is a process, and so what 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 I've learned in rooms Alcoholics Anonymous is I learned to stay there. I had my 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 very first sponsor because I was eager to do. He used to, he, he told me one day, he used to give me the, he wouldn't talk straight to me because he knew I was too, I was too ready to fix it. And so he told me one day, he said, boy, go down to the, he said, let's do this with me. I said, do what? He said, go down to the bus stop. I said, what bus stop, man? He said, just go down to the bus stop. I said, okay, I'm going down to the bus stop. He said, what are you doing there? I said, I'm waiting on the bus. He said, well, what's happening now? I said, the bus is coming. He said, well, what's happening? I said, I'm getting on the bus. He said, well, what are you doing now? I said, I'm, I'm paying the man. He said, well, what are you doing? I'm sitting down in the back of the bus. He said, well, what are you doing now? I said, I'm looking out the window. <laughs> he said, who's driving the bus? I said, the bus driver's driving the bus. <laughs> he said, well, why don't you just let the bus driver drive the bus? Boy, I realize that you can't, you can't fix your life. You know, what you do is go to meeting and, uh, and, uh, don't do nothing. And that was a hard thing for me, man, because I was so used to fixing stuff. I had to, I was responsible. I was living on ideals. I was living on ideals that if I didn't do it, nobody could do it. See, because I went in the military and started an organization in the military. You understand what I'm saying? I, I didn't like the way that they was treating people. <laughs> I started an organization, and I called it Bro Brothers Rights Organization. And if you had any problem with the military, come see me. <laughs> I had read documentations, and I knew what to do. And Uncle Sam heard about that, and he didn't like that too much. <clears throat> Who is that private? <laughs> <laughs> not sergeant, not corporal. <laughs> Who is that private? And so they came to see me. And they sit down and talk with me. And they thought that I had a mental issue. <laughs> so they told me I need to go down to the hospital for a couple of weeks and let them give me some medication. So let me get, let me, let, get you some rest, Frank. And I told him, I told him, F you, you go get some rest. <laughs> And the war was on. <laughs> and they ended up court martialing me for, I was facing six years in stockade. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and by the, by the, by the grace of God, I, I, I survived. So I just say that to say that this is who I am. This is what we found in my fourth and fifth step. If I don't come to meetings on a regular basis, because I ain't drinking and drugging, I'm subject to try to control something. <laughs> that abnormal fear kick in and I'm trying to control something. Uh, that's why I don't go to business meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to business meetings because I'll be trying to control something. My sponsor and I both came to that conclusion. <laughs> and so I try to run the business meeting without going to the business <laughs> I get sponsees and put them in place. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> this is who I am. And so once once I discovered who I who I was, then I take me everywhere I go with caution. I, I started playing golf about 17 years ago, and I fell in love with it. And uh, it was a great. I think I think every recovering alcoholic needs a hobby. I think we need a hobby. You know, besides going to meetings, meetings are first, but hobby. And so I started playing golf, and, and I started meeting all these wonderful people, man. And uh, and uh, and I had to take me. I had to take me and all of those people's lives without altering anything. And that was hard, man. Because I want you, I wanted you all to believe that I wasn't who I was. You know what I'm saying? I. I wanted I wanted you to believe that I was I was educated and I I was profound and and, and, I, and I hit the golf ball pretty good. I had to learn to hit the golf ball pretty good. And people 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 that that don't play a lot don't know that if you practice a lot you'll get good. They think it's intellect. Oh, it, it's just brilliant the way you hit that ball. But they I was practicing every night. Every night I was practicing, and I got really good. And so when I go to the golf course, they would automatically put me in a position to use them. Why? Because I'm an alcoholic. But what I had to do, I had to learn that I was an alcoholic, and I was out there to have fun, not to use people. <laughs> Frank, you're not here to use these people because they open up their billfold to you. <laughs> 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 I had to take I have to take you all everywhere I go. <laughs> everywhere I go. And so and so I remember one day I was playing out out, out, out in East Lake <clears throat> and um uh, I was playing with this group of guys and I know they were little college guys. You know, because all the little college guys walk alike and talk and talk a lot. <laughs> talk a lot. <laughs> and uh and uh so I was sort of envious. And I was hitting the ball real good. I, I was tearing their asses up. I was, <laughs> I was just, I was grinding. <laughs> grinding. And so we get up to the ninth hole, and I'm getting ready to putt for a long birdie, baby boy. And I get over that ball, and when I get over that ball, everything is quiet. It's a beautiful day, beautiful spring day, everything is quiet. And I start telling these guys, y'all know, y'all know, I used to get high over in those apartments over there. Those apartments used to be called Little Vietnam. And many of days, many of days I was over in there, and they was like, I mean, nothing was moving. Ants weren't moving, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Because they thought I was intelligent. Never done anything wrong. But anyway, uh, when I finished telling that story, we stood on that tea box, on that green, and had a testimony meeting. They did their testimonies. All four of us did testimonies. And so by the time we got to the clubhouse, we were so full to where all of us left. We quit. We quit. We didn't play the rest of the nine. But that's what happened. See, I, I got to take y'all everywhere I go. Days that I don't want to take y'all, I got to take you. And in closing, <clears throat> in closing, I, I remember I was in a treatment center, and this lady, uh, I had this counselor, and she knew, she, she knew that I wanted to get sober. See, willingness has a look. Mm. Willingness has a look. And she knew that I wanted to get sober, and she spent extra time with me. And this one day, this one day, uh, uh, she said, she, we, we was having a, we was having a, um, a party night in the little treatment center. And that's why you come in and you have your little popcorn and your, your little candy and they play the little music and, and everybody's standing around, you know. And, and so the music was sounding good. I used to love to dance. I used, I used to love to dance. And, and the music was sounding good and nobody was dancing, right? You know, it's hard. It's hard to get your feet to do the right thing when you when you ain't drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody is everybody's like chilling. And so she comes up to me and she whispers in my ear, she said, Frank, you know, if you don't dance now, 
you may go get drunk and dance. I said, what? You know, she said it again. And so I said, I don't want to get drunk. So I walked over to the one of the little ladies. I said, would you like to dance? And she said, no. <laughs> We heard a lot of that, haven't we, fellas? <laughs> I used to get mad. Why don't y'all come out here then? <laughs> <laughs> Got all pretty to come to the club and order dance. But anyway. <laughs> and I went to another young lady. I said, would you like to dance? She said, no. It looked, it looked like they had a club to teach them how to say no. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, uh, Nick, none of them wanted to dance, right? And the music was sounding kind of good. And it was... (laughs) 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 And I've been dancing ever since. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.